Hello and welcome to a power packed edition of Brand Equity with me, Sonali Krishna. This week, Brand Equity travels at lightning speed from an exclusive interview with Mickey Pant, President and Global CMO of Yum Brands, the owners of KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell, to the big story JWT's managing partner Rohit Ori putting in his papers. Here, Rohit speaks exclusively to Brand Equity on the real reasons for his resignation. To KB Sridhar's latest passion that's painting on the iPad. He's the Chief Marketing Officer of the $13 billion Yum Brands International Division Yum Restaurants, the world's largest restaurant company with over 35,000 outlets. He's responsible for leading and establishing a singular global brand positioning and identity for KFC, Pizza Hut and ultimately for all the Yum Brands around the world. An IT Kanpur graduate, Muktesh Pant, popularly known as Mickey Pant, realized that engineers are given a pat on the back and even the best employee award, but it's the marketing and finance guys who get good money. So when some months later, Hindustan Lever came to the IIT campus to recruit engineers, Muktesh Pant charmed his way into HUL's marketing department. Today, we're lucky to have him with us, the man himself, who chat about managing large brands, the fast food business and its future. Say chicken, say pizza, say tacos and say yum. Mouth-watering, isn't it? Don't know what you're thinking, but we're just referring to the world's largest restaurant company, Yum Brands Inc. Based in Louisville in Kentucky, Yum houses nearly 38,000 restaurants in over 110 countries. The company boasts of brands like KFC, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. That makes them the global leaders of chicken, pizza and Mexican-style food categories. And to find out what it takes to build a brand as big as Yum and sustain its market value, we have with us Mickey Pan, President of Yum Restaurants International. Mickey has lent his marketing and branding expertise to many a brands like PepsiCo, Reebok International and HUL India. And all these brands have excelled during his tenure. Thank you so much for joining us on Brand Equity. Mickey, truly a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. How would you evaluate KFC and Pizza Hut in India? Well, we've reached now 300 restaurants in India. So in a way, we are happy because 300 is a good number. Uh, but on the other hand, if you look at China with 3,000 restaurants or 4,000 restaurants, then obviously there is a long way to go. We, we started in China earlier than in India. And in India, we had a bit of a false start at one stage. We started Pizza Hut, which has gone on fine, and we've got 175 of those. So we started KFC and then we stopped KFC and then we restarted only about three to five years ago. And if you take the rate of progression of KFC since the time it was reintroduced, it's been on par with what happened in China in the initial years. So uh, to that extent, we are happy. We are very happy with the financial performance of these brands. They're uh, good and they're profitable. And we are happy with the business model overall. We feel at this time, given the level of interest from franchisees and also given the level of return that we are getting on our own investments in India, that we will continue to see significant growth into the future. But would you agree that Pizza Hut has somewhere lost its edge as Domino's, at least in the Indian market, is leaps ahead? Well, Pizza Hut has two businesses. One is uh, dining, dining, dining restaurants, casual dining restaurants, and there we are the absolute leader. And that continues. And uh, then separately is delivery or home service. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, Domino's have done very well there. Uh, we are fully geared to meet the challenge and to grow our delivery business very rapidly. So we have uh, Pizza Hut delivery units separate from our uh, dine-in restaurant uh, unit. And we are going to grow those very aggressively as well. Mickey, at a time when the health wave has hit the world, how do brands such as KFC, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell market themselves, especially in America, where the average American has grown more health conscious over the past 5 to 10 years? Now, we are constantly working on this aspect. So, you're probably aware that in America, we introduced a range of grilled chicken products and that uh, we, are, we are introducing them rapidly, all of the options for people who prefer to have grilled chicken instead of fried chicken, for example. And in the case of Pizza Hut, we are one of the largest sellers of salads anywhere in the world. So we have salad bars in our restaurants all over the world in Pizza Hut. And we offer plated salad alternatives. The other area we've been working on is on improving the nutritional quality by improving the ingredients. So we, about a year ago, we eliminated trans fats in all our cooking oils in KFC. And we're constantly working to uh, you know, improve levels of uh, fat as well as salt in our food. 
you know, the fast food market in the US and other first world nations have been saturated, leaving limited growth beyond maybe some store sales, while emerging market expansion profits are split between local companies and joint ventures. Would you then agree that the fast food market is somewhere heading towards danger and possibly stagnation of sorts? Well, you know, I, that may be slightly uh, overstating the facts. Uh, one of the fastest growing markets in the world for us, for example, is France. In the country of France, for example, in a place called Le Halles in Paris, we have the largest selling KFC restaurant in the whole world. Uh, it does more sales than any restaurant in the United States. And in general, our store, sales per store in France are double that of many, many, uh, uh, the average in many countries of the world. Uh, we believe we have enormous runway for growth in countries like France and also Germany. Uh, which historically we have not been as well penetrated as several other markets. So we see room for expansion. The other brand that we are very keen to expand into all developed countries is Taco Bell. Taco Bell is our most profitable brand in the United States by far. We make more money on Taco Bell than our other brands in the United States. But outside the United States, we have not extended it so much. So over the last three years, we've launched Taco Bell in about a dozen countries, including India, by the way. We launched in the city of Bangalore. And uh, we expect to build Taco Bell into the third engine of growth beyond KFC and Pizza Hut. So we see opportunities for growth even in developed markets. Having said that, you are absolutely correct that in developing markets, the rate of growth is dramatically higher. In India, for example, KFC has been growing at a compounded rate of about 65% a year for the last three or four years. That's an enormous rate of growth. And even if we don't sustain that rate of growth, uh, the number of KFCs in this country is going to increase quite dramatically. So at the moment, like I said at the start, we have about 300 restaurants employing about 10,000 people. And we're expecting that by 2015 to take that to 1,000 restaurants employing about 50,000 people. What's the importance of pricing in value-driven quick service worlds like yours? And how do you manage keeping prices low and at the same time keeping your margins high as commodity inflation continues? Around the world, we try to deliver meals in the fast food business, that is KFC and Taco Bell, which are at about $5 per person. Now, in developing markets like India, that sometimes even that can be very high because, as you know, in India particularly, there's outstanding quality street food available at even lower prices. So it's a constant challenge to make affordability a key focus. And we've got products starting in India at price points just under 30 rupees, which would be 60 cents, which would be among the lowest in the world. So that's one aspect. They're constantly focused on creating lower and uh, attractive price points. The second is that these days, as you are aware, there is significant inflation in agricultural commodities. And what I think we've been particularly good at globally over the last 18 months is holding our prices fairly tight. So that our inflation has been much smaller than it has been in the case of agricultural commodities in general. And that comes partly from better supply chain management and a lot of it from uh, smart management overall. But we are extremely keen to uh, develop an even sharper competitive edge by making sure that we do not inflate our prices in an inflationary environment. But do you think it's harder to find innovation in a company the size of Yum Brands as compared to smaller businesses? It's always a challenge in a large company because you have a responsibility to grow existing sales. I think the number of new products that we introduce is probably the largest in, a, in the restaurant business. And not just new products, but new ways of doing business. You know, we're changing many of our menu boards from mechanical to digital with television screens. We're experimenting with kiosk, kiosks in, in several restaurants. Uh, we're experimenting with uh, cashless payment, you know, payment through cell phones without the use of credit cards. We are one of the largest uh, uh, businesses in the world on online. So to Pizza Hut, we deliver over $1 billion of pizzas every year, which are ordered online through the internet. Uh, we have as a company between our brands almost 10 million fans on Facebook. So it is innovative, uh, but it is true that in a large company, the perception is that uh, uh, your, your existing business is so large that the innovation will come from outside. I think it will be a bit of both. You know, Yum! Brands recently made headlines because of their announcement of letting go of Long John Silver and A&W All-American restaurants. What is the rationale for letting these brands go? Well, you know, the three major brands that we have got, which are Pizza Hut, KFC and Taco Bell, uh, each of them have got system revenues of about $10 billion each. 
So they're very large brands. A&W and Long John Silver, between them were about a billion dollars. So it's very difficult in a large company to pay sufficient attention to uh, smaller brands. The other was that we felt that we have so much opportunity for growth with both KFC as well as with Taco Bell that we did not really need other brands. So for example, key countries like India and China, we see that KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut have got runway for growth for the next 10 years that will keep us very busy indeed. And there was no real need to introduce a seafood chain or a burger chain in, this, uh, in these markets. So after weighing the pros and cons for several years, uh, we decided to let go of those two brands. Uh, but we are constantly evaluating other opportunities. So in China, for example, the China company recently acquired a local concept called Little Sheep. It sells Chinese hot pot food, and we will always do that sort of uh, uh, activity. But our major focus is on our three significant brands. Post the acquisition of Little Sheep in China, are you looking at taking the chain global? I think it's early to say that yet. Uh, the Little Sheep acquisition is not yet fully done. Uh, the paperwork is in progress. But I think that uh, Chinese food is popular all over the world. And at the moment, uh, outside the United States, there is not a chain of restaurants that does that well. So that could well be a possibility. Also, our China team has developed their own Chinese concept, which is called East Dawning. And that might well be another one that we commercialize in other countries of the world. Right. Thank you so much, Mickey. Truly a pleasure to have you on the show and have a good trip in India. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Time to take the first break on the show, but you stay tuned. It's coming up. Rohit Ori for the first time talking about the issues at JWT and his reasons to put in his papers. We'll be right back.